All right. So a couple things now that we are at a certain point in the, the novel here and the Bundrens are getting ready to begin their journey. So they begin their journey um, after Addie's death, of course, and every character is having his or her own reaction to Addie's death based on their point of views, but also based on the relationship that each character has to the matriarch. Okay, so interpretations of Addie's death. Vardaman is going to be an increasingly important voice within the novel. Often his concerns mirror Darl's concerns about physical existence. So remember, Darl um, wonders about the meaning of the word is, um, so that, um, that someone's is can be different from another person's is. So that means existence. The temporary, um, the now is different for each individual, individual person. Um, Vardaman, uh, in his own way, talks about that as well. When he says, Mom, my mother is not a fish, uh, confusing the fish with his mother, um, to trying to distinguish between those two things. What, uh, in his own way, what he's saying is the fish was here one moment. And then another moment, it was a pile of guts. In the same way, my mother was here one moment, and now she's gone. So so it's a very philosophical, deep question of what does it mean to be in existence and uh, in one minute? And then what does it mean to be sort of gone in the next? So Vardaman, in his own childish way, is mirroring Darl's very deep philosophical con uh, uh, thoughts about life and death and existence. Cash, on the other hand, responds to death with factual evidence, um, uh, factual attention to detail. So he thinks about the coffin itself. He thinks about the building of a coffin and how it best should be done um, as he said, you know, on, on a balance to make sure that it's it's balanced. Um, this can be read as callous and in particular uh, oftentimes views his children as being disrespectful to the death of their mother. But really, this is Cash's way of responding. He's not trying to be callous. Rather, in his own way, he is devoted to Addie by paying very special attention to his carpentry and the details of the coffin, and that's the expression of his grief. Dewey Dell, meanwhile, is pre preoccupied with her own bodily um, concerns. Think about the cow in the barn with that needs to be milked. Uh, she's aware that her mother has has died, and she's also aware that this need, uh, this pressing need of a, a baby growing within her eclipses the grief that she otherwise would feel for her mother. Okay, keep in mind, notice that the structure of the novel makes it possible to hear multiple interior monologues that are occurring simultaneously. Think about Dewey Dell in the barn with Vardaman and the cow. Um, they're both standing in proximity to each other, having different experiences simultaneously. And the, the best part of As I Lay Dying is that Faulk Faulkner lets us experience these interior monologues that are happening, um, you know, simultaneously, we get to see the inner monologues of each individual character uh, in real time. All right, so the journey begins, and of course, the trip is problematic from the beginning. They have difficulty uh, uh, with Addie loading her physical body into the coffin and then loading it into the cart. Uh, there is a problem with a recent rainstorm that has washed out the the bridge. So uh, they're already just like Homer's The Odyssey and Odysseus. Right from the beginning, the trip uh, presents many challenges that make it very difficult for the the family to move forward. Okay, so one thing about um, uh, the characters. Jewel's mother is a horse. That's what Darl tells him. Jewel loves the horse, 
Um, Jewel, though, loves the horse, but also is violent towards the horse. He expresses his love through violent, um, violent whippings of the horse. So there's a couple different meanings that we could take from this sentence. Jewel's mother is a horse. It could mean that Jewel loves the horse more than his mother, or it could mean that Jewel doesn't have to worry about Addy because he has his horse. So that's something to think about. Daryl could be saying one or both of these things and uh, when he says, your mother is a horse. Okay. Daryl saying that he has no mother. Okay, there are a few ways to interpret that. One would be that, that Daryl... Um, Daryl's mother is gone. She is dead, no longer in existence. Okay. Another meaning of that, another possibility might be that Addie is not really Daryl's mother and never was. That doesn't necessarily mean that she's not genetically his mother, but it could mean that Daryl has never felt loved by his mother. And so she never was and never will be a caring figure um, figure for Darl, the way that she was for Jewel. Okay, so Bartimon's mother is a fish and Jewel's mother is a horse. Um, these are statements that are very simple, but they, they could have multiple meanings symbolically. Um, they could mean something must replace their mother, or they could indicate that their mother is simply gone from existence and, and uh, never never will be um, in proximity to to Vardaman or Jewel ever again. Okay, so one uh, just reminder for, of our terms, dark humor. This is a comic style that makes light of subject matter that is generally considered taboo or morbid. So there's many moments in As I Lay Dying where it, the characters are fumbling around or uh, you know, outlandish things happen, and it is almost silly. But again, we can never forget that the underlying themes of this novel are quite serious, and that, that's dark humor. Okay, chiasmus, this is a rhetorical or literary figure in which words, grammatical constructions, or concepts are repeated in the reverse order in the same or modified form. So it's almost a crisscross, and I'll show you what I mean by this. Okay, now, in the beginning of the book, okay, and, and therefore the beginning of the Bundren's journey, Darrell has largely accepted the death of Addie. Um, he doesn't seem, uh, seem to be struggling with the death of Addie. But as the trip moves forward, he, he slowly begins to devolve into despair. Whereas the rest of the Bundrens from the beginning are in despair over Addie's death, and then slowly that despair begins to resolve itself into acceptance. So the characters literally crisscross each other, and that's the structure of, of As I Lay Dying. So uh, when we get to the part where the, the uh, characters are going to cross the river, which is a pivotal part of the journey, keep in mind that Jewel has no real plan. Uh, he doesn't really think through the best way to get across the river now that the bridge is gone. But uh, he can't really think. He prefers to act instead. That's Jewel's character. Cash, on the other hand, is slow and deliberate. All his thought is about how best to secure the coffin and get it safely across. Vardaman also narrates the event from the side, followed by Tull. Okay, and, and both are outsiders there and have no we have no reason to distrust either one of those characters and their uh, their view of this event. Okay, but all perspectives give the reader more insight into this, this pivotal moment in the book. Okay, so again, many interior monologues going on simultaneously, and that's kind of the beauty of As I Lay Dying. All right. Okay, so we'll stop there uh, and continue the book.